Hey, what's up guys? So for episode two in the series where I'm fixing my common EcoBoost problems, we're gonna look at these CR Performance Engineering exhaust manifolds that are over my shoulder over here. We're just gonna put them on the bench and um, take some measurements and kind of see what they're all about. And hopefully they get, it gives you a pretty good idea of, uh, of the benefits that they could possibly offer. So let's take a look. So what you're seeing in front of you is the OEM exhaust manifold. This, is, this happens to be uh, my passenger side unit. And for those of you that don't know, on these F-150 EcoBoosts, these manifolds tend to warp. And that's the reason why I'm upgrading to those much nicer looking units over there. So to kind of to illustrate that warp, I'm just going to grab an edge here. I'm not going to lift up. I'm just going to wiggle. Right? So... That implies that that is not straight or not flat. Your cylinder, or excuse me, your uh, your block that these attach to is obviously straight. So that's where that leak comes from. That's why it broke off that rear stud and causes that whistle and that whirl. So, um, yep, so this is the OEM unit. And now we'll start looking at the, or comparing it to the new CRP manifolds over here. All right, so what we have in front of us is we have the, the stock EcoBoost Turbo, the stock EcoBoost Manifold, and these upgraded units from CRP. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to measure the exhaust inlet of the Turbo, and we're going to compare it to that of uh, the manifolds over here as far as the manifold outlets. So let's measure that. Getting a 1.33. Let's compare that to the CRPs. All right, the CRP is slightly larger, uh, 1.36. Okay. So let's go back and re-get re this or remeasure this. Excuse me. 1.33 again. Now let's compare that down here to the um, OEM manifold. And as you can see, the OEM manifold outlet over here is much smaller so we'll actually get a measurement off of that what about 1.16 so it's a there's a little bit of a flow restriction here on the OEM manifold compared to the uh, turbo inlet over here so that's that's one strike against the OEM so far um, the other thing I noticed right away I'll get this turbo out of the way because I think we're done with it the other thing I noticed right away is the width, um, especially down towards, this, this would be the front of the engine. So let's measure the width of the OEM manifold. And this is going to be, let's just for consistency sake, let's measure, I think the, this one of the skinniest parts is right above this nut, or sorry, this, uh, this hole over here for the stud. So let's just measure it there. Okay, looking at 1.16 inches. This is kind of arbitrary, but this is this will just kind of give you an idea of the different construction. And it's measured over here and get a good measurement off this. Okay, pull it straight up. So 1.5. So if I do my math, that's what? Uh, 0.4 inches thicker, so nearly a half inch thicker um, up here. Um, let's try to, let's try to compare height as well. This might be a little tricky with this GoPro setup, but let's see here. You might just have to trust me on this one because I'm, I'm going to eyeball it. So let's start with the OEM at the highest point. We're looking at 2.26 or 2.27 inches. And let's look at the CRPs, the highest point. Oh, if I, if I could do it, there we go. And we're looking at 2.5. So 
so a little bit larger. Um, I think they're just kind of getting more of more of a, uh, a a larger port inside, and kind of trying to help help that air uh, make it all the way back here to the outlet. Um, one of the biggest things that's going to help this from warping is the thickness of the flange here. So let's see what that's looking like. I'm going to awkwardly get these up here. So at the bolts, let's see the OEM, it's measured here, is right around just under half an inch at 0.44. Measure the CRP. Get it, try to get an accurate measure for you guys. It was a little awkward. All right, we're just over a half inch. It was a 0.51 ish. If I can get it. All right, there we go. I have 0.51. So a tiny bit thicker. Um, Let's see. I do you find it interesting that these are cut out here? That, that's a def definitely difference in design. Oh, and look at this rib back here. So, hopefully that shows up on camera. So I'm noticing right here, you have this weird. I don't even know if this is a r intentional rib. It's kind of like a looks like some sort of casting mark. I mean, there's kind of a, a mark up here as well. Um, and this is this is the part that this is the the stud that often breaks, so it looks like CRP. You know they added, you know just eyeball it here. You know a, th a three quarter inch strap looks kind of like a, like a three quarter inch wide rib here, that um, that looks like it's going to offer more strength to this rear part of the flange, and also there's this weird kind of kick. It's kind of like this rectangular kick out there, which I'm not really sure what that accomplishes, but um, it's kind of interesting. They've got some other stuff up here. It might be just be design uh, for aesthetics. I'm not, I'm not sure. All right, but okay, let's go. Oh, and look at this. I don't really think that this part necessarily uh, warps up here, but look at the thickness difference between this mounting surface and this one. All right, so let's let's check the underside. And obviously, don't judge this one off aesthetics. It's got eighty-six thousand miles on it. All right, so let's measure the uh, port width on the OEMs. We're looking at almost two inches exactly. Let's look on it on the CRPs. Okay, just over. Like you know, that's that's hardly, that's hardly anything, and they're pretty consistent. Okay, so they're pretty similar to try height. About an inch, just slightly more again, about like point one of an inch. Um, Higher than, higher, taller, and wider than the uh, and the OEM it seems like. Let's, let's compare the shapes. I feel like those shapes are pretty similar as well, as far as the uh, the ports there. Okay. Oh, I know this is backwards for you guys. So let, me, let me fix that. So looking looking inside, one thing I noticed right away is like there's almost like this. It seems like this OEM manifold, it seems like someone's on the back side kind of like squeezing it together and you got kind of have like this swelling on the sides. I don't notice that on the CRPs here. Um, it seems like it's relatively um, decent flow. Um, it's kind of, I guess that's what that extra width gets you. Um, so that way they can uh, kind of make it a larger opening and easier and better flow. Learn anything from this side profile? Not much. 
pretty similar in shape, but you know the dimensions. This it seems like it necks down a little bit more over here on this side. But so I, I'm pretty impressed with the construction. I, I'm really fingers crossed that, the, that these will work out, um, and they they solve my problem and add a little bit of power. You know, I'll throw the power chart on now, the dyno graph that the CRP has on their website. And I think they they claim um, some pretty good power and torque gains, you know, in the realm of like 10 or so horsepower and 20 or so foot pounds of torque. So that'll be a, that'll be a nice little gain if if that's um, if that's what I see. I'm going to do a zero to 60 test to confirm. I already did my pre-test, so I'll do my my uh, post mod test as well and see if see if uh, these help contribute to a faster time. Um, one thing I would like to note for that graph is it, it's the area under the curve. So it's not just, you know, that, that those power numbers, um, you know, they do give you an indication, but I think the, the curve is really um, kind of going to give you a better indication on the uh, performance gains that these supposedly offer. So, okay. So hopefully this little video was helpful and kind of give you guys some insight on the differences between the OEM and the CRP manifolds. I think the little changes as well as the more uh, heavy duty construction will uh, give me, you know, two benefits, hope and, you know, fingers crossed. So um, the one benefit being it'll fix my exhaust manifold leak um, and stop and prevent it from happening in the future. And also um, give me a little bit of a, you know, power and torque gain. So we'll see that uh, when I, when I do that test I mentioned. And uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. Thanks.